So the trick to these paintings is on the wall right there. And what it shows you is a travel van and an e-bike and then a watercolor painting. And what I've been doing is I've been traveling around and using um, these special watercolor pencils. They're called Derwin uh, ink tents, meaning highly saturated watercolor pencils. And they make you, they trick you because they're soft when you put them down, but if you touch them to water, they're really bright. And, uh, and so anyhow, it turns into a watercolor and I'm not happy with it. It's good, but it's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something iconic. And so I covered it with gouache. And gouache means it's a opaque, flat paint. And the trick is that it eliminates things and helps you to see the underlying shapes. And I was looking for the shapes. I was looking for the shapes of vistas. Everything's got to be really big vistas but a vista of the ocean is pretty flat it doesn't really do it unless you're in one of those dangerous you know perfect sea kind of things which uh, i haven't got to yet <laughs> anyhow once i had the shapes and i liked them i threw it into the ipad pro and then the magic occurs mm -hmm. and so using something called vector art or vector painting i can vectorize all the shapes very quickly and then give them gradients that are exquisite and turn up the saturation full on, 100%. So like one of my tricks when I go out to look at a um, landscape is I'll take a photo and I'll turn the saturation all the way up and I'll duplicate the photo and turn it up again and duplicate the photo until you don't recognize that picture anymore. It is so oversaturated, it looks like the Beatles album. And that is the look I'm looking for because that high pitch, that high saturation is exciting. And it allows you to have freedom of thinking about things in a way that you wouldn't think about them normally. And so, so that, that led to the, the, um, the vector painting, led to the final concept, which is the paintings you're seeing on the wall. So every one of these started that way. They're all done by um, kind of, I think, backwards. You don't go to the painting first, you go to the drawing and through all these steps in order to get to this, this level. Um, I have- How long did that take? This one was started on Friday and finished on Tuesday. Oh, wow. Once I had the concept, it goes fast. Does that include the initial shots that you take out? The initial stuff takes hours and days in a life. That's where, that's where, that's where. All that stuff is always happening and by being an artist and doing art, it gives you the ability if you can't stop thinking to, uh, to put it someplace to use. And it really helps to calm me down because I think a lot. And so I like to paint because it's a slow, slow process. And it's almost like a meditation. Yeah, so when you're actually painting, that is really like a meditation. So um, I don't know if that answers the question or not, but it's super fun too. Yeah, um, this piece here, this piece was created back in high school. The actual piece that, that's not here, it just was done in high school, but it was awful because you can't make a straight line. You know, you can't make a straight line and you try your best and then you say, oh, it's not straight. It's like, eh, it is what it is. But today we have these tools, these vector tools that allow me to have perfection, like OCD perfection. It's like, I'm so happy now, right? <laughs> and so I can make a piece like this and then print it out and the lines are perfect, you know? And I'm just super happy with that. So that's an overview of the main show here. All of them, because they're vector, are highly scalable. They can be any size. As you can see, there's a piece right behind Dave right there. So that's on fabric, right? <laughs> and uh, all of these pieces can be applied to fabric. Diane's wearing one of my scarves, right? And um, Gabriella back there, I don't know if she can hear, right, is wearing a piece designed based on this, um, this Hillsborough Inlet. Uh, so this is the Hillsborough Drawbridge. Come on in and model it. Come on in, where is she? Gabriella! 
Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. You want her to model. Yeah, we need we need a real one. Ah, uh, here she is. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Here she is. Right, so all of this can be applied to almost anything. And so Gabrielle is wearing the latest. Yeah. Right. Turn, turn yeah. I hope it's falling nicely. Yeah. Should I? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. So it's a. Uh, it looks fine. It's just, yeah. <laughs> just that you know it's longer than it actually is. Oh. Yeah. 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 And that can be in like so many. There's like 20 different styles that can come into. It. So the the piece I wanted to because I knew I was doing a show here. I wanted to do something that related to Hillsboro. And so I took my bike and drove around and stumbled on the drawbridge, which I really liked. And I took some photos and took it home and then turned it into what's called a mola design. Mola means like a Guatemalan pattern. And um, it's one of the things I do. I study art all day, every day. And I want to learn the styles of every different location. So the mola piece is something I've always liked. And if you go in the other room, there's a painting of El Arenal, the volcano from Costa Rica, done in the same kind of style, that kind of Mola style. Is it funny? It's, <laughs> it's the way you know, said it. I, um, me llamo Juan, that's his new name. Yeah, yeah. I went to, um, uh, I, I invented the, the characters that you see on the drawbridge and uh, had a lot of fun, you know, kind of like placing them there. And I want to pitch to the city to change the wall, make them paint that. Yes. So, um, and then I came up with uh, the manatee as a character thinking about this place, thinking about what could represent this place that was, um, that was just playful and happy all the time and made the floating manatee. The piece is, being auctioned off 100% donated to the Historical Society. And my framer, who's this incredible uh, second or third generation framer that has paintings in all over the museum, uh, frames all over all the museums, happens to be here. We have them here in South Florida, donated a 24 karat gold frame to that painting. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so that's like a $900 frame. And it's right now at $400. Yeah. Anyhow, um, behind you over there is a really fun piece. Um, I don't know if anybody here knows the artist Henry Rousseau, Henri Rousseau. Uh, he was uh, during the Impressionist period, and he did a painting called The Sleeping Gypsy. And I know that I'm talking kind of quickly, and maybe I'm not reaching you on the level that you need to understand this thing. So. On that page that's on the wall, there's a QR code to reach me, and you'll find QR codes all over this building to reach me, and I'll explain it better. <laughs> but the story goes that on the drive that we took um, with the van, I was looking for, I don't know, something about the American Indians that would resonate. And I stumbled on a library, an American Indian library, and they taught me about the white buffalo. And the white buffalo is the creation story, is related to the creation story of the American Indian. And so, okay, now I have a quest. Got to find the white buffalo, right? And so we went all over looking for the white buffalo. And we ended up at uh, North Dakota, at the Badlands. And the Badlands are also called the Painted Rocks. And so when you look at those Badlands, the striated, horizontal striated rocks, they turn colors. In the it, depending on the time of day, they're very subtle, but I was looking for a real high saturation. So I went there and did a drawing, and then I went to the museums nearby and got the, the clothing and did drawings of the clothing. And kind of like a paper doll, I took the clothing and attached it to the model and added the white buffalo because, um, because of the creation story. And in the process, found another Indian sculpture and that um, the bighorn sheep and have him drumming the bighorn sheep into the moon. So it's a real playful piece and that's going to be my next large painting when I, when I get
get back to my empty house because all the paintings are here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. The funniest thing is that as we drove and ended up at Niagara Falls, I started doing the drawings of Niagara Falls from the bottom. And when you look at Niagara Falls, it's gigantic and the water is amazing. And there's like mist. So I started drawing the mist because I'm thinking Japanese art and the mist would be really interesting. And so I did the mist and then I went down below, like 18 floors down, doing it again and there's the mist. Started drawing again and those shapes turned into the white buffalo. And I think that the Niagara Falls and the white buffalo, that's the same thing. And it's water that's life. And it's the creation story for America. And where a better place than Niagara Falls? So anyhow, that's the story of that poster over there. I'm, I'm proud to share it with you. There's lots of paintings around here. There's a progression of where it all went from. Uh, I'd love to tell you in more detail, but I think it, it's more personal. Maybe I can grab one and show it to you. 